Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, we're looking at a new Psalm, Psalm 37. If there was ever a chapter from the Bible that's needed for us today to give us instruction in dealing with the age-old question, why do the wicked prosper while the righteous suffer, the good person suffers? This gives us the instructions and gives us help to deal with that problem. Well, I'll never forget, it was my very first year at Lynchburg Baptist College, today Liberty University, and I heard Dr. Falwell say, Psalm 37 was his favorite psalm. Well, I immediately begin to memorize it. So this is probably the first full chapter, 40 verses that I memorized in the Old Testament. And it's always been a deep blessing and a help to me, especially over these 50 years of ministry, looking at people who are so good and they suffer so hurt, suffer so much pain and hurt in so many different ways. And then watching in America, especially over these 50 years, how the iniquity, the wickedness, the evilness that's in the world around us from wicked people, they seem to get by with it. Well, this Psalm helps us deal with that. Matter of fact, you find four things at least in this Psalm. David tells us first to trust in the Lord. Then he tells us the Lord will bless his people. And then third, he note we can see that the Lord understands our situation and he also will judge the wicked one day. So the Lord tells us to trust him. He tells us that he understands exactly what's going on in our lives. We can trust him even then. And we know that he will bless the good person. And there are blessings that we have that they have nothing to do with money or outward prosperity. Uh, maybe David wrote this psalm with the book of Job in his hand. And Job suffered like no other person suffered. They tell us that David, no doubt, was in his old age because verse 25 says, once I was old, once I was, uh, he said, once I was young, but now I am old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. So David tells us in this Psalm that uh, he was young at one time, but now he's old and he's looking back over his years. Uh, some commentators have mentioned that it's very possible. David has set Solomon down and said, Solomon, let me help you deal with one of the biggest problems you're going to have to deal with. And that is the prosperity of the wicked and the suffering of the righteous. And so you'll see that over and again in this Psalm. So let's read these first 11 verses because they tell us the Lord can be trusted. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And so David is now basing what he says on the covenant promises of God that's found in Leviticus chapter 26 and Deuteronomy chapter uh, 27 through 30. And what we learn in that covenant promise, God has promised Israel, if you obey me, if you follow my instructions and you live according to my word, I will bless you and you will inherit the land and you will be able to stay there and enjoy my blessings. You will be a blessed people. That's the message of the Old Testament. But he also warns, if you disobey me and stray from my commandments, you will 
will not be blessed and you actually will be chastened and go into captivity. And so my friend, this is a chapter that really teaches us in the midst of the trials and tribulations of life and as we look at the big questions in the world, don't fret, keep your trust and faith in the Lord and in His promises. Well, God bless you and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.